Hello, and welcome to the open house for the Roachport Bridge project to kick off construction and design of our project. I'd like to introduce the I-70 Roachport Design Build Project team. Um, all of these folks will be here today to answer any questions that you may have. First, myself, uh, Brandy Baldwin. I am the project director for MoDOT. We also have Derek Lepper, our deputy project De director for MoDOT. With Lunda Construction Company, our design build contractor, we have Mark Olson, the project manager, Crystal Allen Dallas, our public information manager, and with Parsons, the lead designer, we have Rick Mante, the design manager, Chris Watts with the roadway lead, Greg Hasbrock, the structures lead, and Sean Light, the safety lead. Our agenda today, we will go over the needs, the reason and needs for the project, the configuration of the new project, what the new bridge will look like, the construction phasing for the project, impacts and out, layout of Route BB, safety features brought to you by this project, what's happening next on the project, and a fly through of the project. First, our project needs um, really come down to safety and reliability of the corridor through this project. As you're all well aware of, we have a very narrow bridge with 29 feet in each direction, providing just minimal shoulders and 12 foot lanes in each direction. And what goes diagonally across your screen here is a heat map of all of the accidents we see within the project limits from the railroad to Route BB. And we will be taking care of many of these issues with our new project. So with this project, um, we will be replacing the Missouri River Bridge along with the Route BB Bridge. Both of these bridges will be replaced and the existing bridges uh, demoed. We also required the contractor provide us um, a project that would accommodate six lanes of traffic on I-70 in the future. And what we are receiving from this project is six lanes of traffic from approximately the railroad bridges to Route BB in both directions. So here are those lane configurations shown to you in a simple graphic where we add the third lane going in the westbound direction coming right off of the ramp at Route BB and where it ends at approximately the route, um, the railroad bridges. And then the eastbound direction, that lane is continued through Route BB ending before the on-ramps to I-70, creating a climbing lane or a passing lane of sorts going up the incline from the bridges to Route BB. So as we build this project, you will notice that um, we will be getting two bridges, one to the north of the existing bridge, then we will demo the existing bridge and add the second bridge approximately in its place. If you joined us before in any of our previous meetings, what we were preparing for was a very wide bridge to the north completely. Uh, what has been proposed to us by the Lunda team is to take advantage of some of that existing um, alignment from the existing bridge. So the new Missouri River Bridge um, includes 16 um, piers, including the abutments with only four of those being near the main river channel itself, two of them being in the river and then two on either, one on either bank. Um, they will be a plate girder bridge in that unit across the main part of the river. And then we will have um, concrete in you girders over the remaining, over the scour hole, 
and landing approximately where it lands today. So about the same length of bridge as you have today, but a much wider bridge. Here's a rendering of the bridge looking from the west to the bluff on the east side. So here's a comparison shot of the existing bridge to the new bridge. You can see kind of ghosted out there the existing bridge and the overlap that the second bridge that we'll build will have with that existing bridge. So the construction phasing, phase one, we will build the first bridge to the north. Then in the second phase, we will demo the existing bridge and build the second bridge south of the new bridge. So right on alignment with the old bridge. And then in your complete, um, at the end, we will have two bridges, one north of the existing location and one on location. In phase two, we will have traffic all on the new bridge to the north. So have four lanes on that for a, a small time period until we have the second bridge complete. So here's a, a rendering of what phase one will look like. So traffic will remain on the existing bridge. We will build the new westbound bridge to the north and two lanes of traffic will be maintained in both directions during this time. This will start this fall and be completed by late spring of 2023. That's when we will move traffic from the existing bridge onto the new bridge. So again, um, here is the construction of phase two, where we've shifted traffic now to the new bridge to the north with four lanes of traffic. All of the traffic will be on that new bridge. We will then demo the existing bridge and build the new eastbound bridge uh, basically in its place. We'll still maintain two lanes of traffic in each direction. And the lanes and shoulder widths that you'll see on that bridge will be very similar to what you see today on the existing bridge. Phase two will be complete by the end of the year of 2024. We'll have both bridges in place and traffic will be split with three lanes in each direction. So here's a rendering of that showing the completed project where we have three lanes in each direction from Route BB to the railroad bridges. So here's Route BB. Um, we have no geometric changes to the ramp, so they will stay right where they are. We also plan for no impacts to any adjacent property owners. I know many of you have seen in the past where we were needing to realign Route BB and get it a little squarer with I-70. Um, we no longer need to do that with new bridge building techniques. We're able to keep it right where it's at and still accommodate six lanes underneath this bridge. We will be repaving the ramp, so we'll see some minor and short closures there to be able to repave them. And Route BB will be built right on its existing alignment. So the detours we expect to see for Route BB when we do have it closed for reconstruction, we will be ramping them um, using the existing um, overpasses at ONC and at 179. So any traffic coming from Rocheport wanting to go south there would exit, make the loop around, and come back to um, the ramps and proceed south. Same with anyone wanting to go in the north direction. So some of the safety items that we are implementing during construction um, will help us improve the geometry of the project, help improve visibility and delineation so you can see the markings and things like that better. 
and are also going to help with communication of the traveling public through intelligent transportation system methods. So in the first picture, we have these glare screens that we will be putting up on temporary barriers um, to help people focus on their task of driving. Then we have the picture with LDS. This is a essentially signing, permanent signing on uh, barriers. This will be something we use during construction, but also in the final um, product as well. This will be on the barriers to help lighten them up um, at when, when it is dark. We also have wet reflective pavement marking. That's a much brighter marking um, to help you see that in wet conditions. We'll also be using smart work zones. There'll be message boards out there to help you identify what you need to do during any times we may be impacting traffic or if there's an incident in the area to help alert you to take different routes. We'll also be using ICON technology, which will communicate with you in any of your navigation apps like Waze or Google Maps to alert you if there's any incidents in the area. So our long-term safety improvements, you can see here in this graphic that from each end of the project, there isn't an inch that we don't cover with some form of safety improvement. So these long-term safety improvements include um, widening shoulders. You see here in the first picture that you have very narrow shoulders on the existing bridge. We'll have much wider shoulders with our final products. We're also including a climbing lane um, like we did on the Mineola Hill project. And again, uh, the wet reflective pavement markers will also be including in the final design recessed pavement markers. Um, these are very shiny objects embedded into the pavement that we can plow over and will be there for um, a very long time. Also rumble strips as we as you're all very well aware of. Again the LDS system. Then we have a couple high friction pavement treatments on the bridge and on the downhill Cline of the hill from Route BB going westbound where we've seen accidents in the past. We also have um, sensors in the pavement and in the air to detect fog and frozen pavement that we'll have in our final product and upgraded cameras in the area to help communicate with our maintenance staff and with the traveling public when we do have instances of incidents in the area we could communicate with with all of these folks to help clear things up quickly and help direct the public in any different direction they may need to go to avoid the incidents. And we'll also be upgrading all of the guardrail through the project. These long-term safety improvements really reduce the, the predicted amount of crashes um, in the project site as well as a significant improvement on reducing fatal and dis disabling injury crashes. See over a 50% decrease in fatal and disabling injuries on the bridge itself. So a very remarkable improvement with all of these added safety features. So what's next? We will be widening pavement west of the existing bridge coming very soon. We'll start that in the next couple weeks. We will be working on the shoulders and in the median area. All of this will be nighttime work. And the reason why we're doing this, this is our first step towards gaining access to the river. So this is some work we need to do before we can actually get into the river and start building that new bridge. So we will be planning a groundbreaking ceremony sometime in October, hopefully early part to mid-October. And we will provide more details on this as they develop on the Roachport Bridge website. Okay, now we'll open it up for questions. So please place any questions you have and comments in the Q&A pod and we'll respond to them verbally. And as we 
answer these questions, we'll be playing a fly-through of the project for your viewing.